Hi, I'm Carolina. I'm a watercolor artist and illustrator based here in California and welcome or welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. It's been a while since I record like my head talking to the camera. <laughs> As you may know from the title of today's video, I'm going to be doing a speech tour. tour. They are right there in my backboard. And it, it was it was a wild <laughs> ride. I think I should first start by showing you the supplies that I use because I you know I didn't really share anything about me doing pitch over here on YouTube except for like a community post that I did at like midnight on Halloween last night. <laughs> I wanted to record this yesterday and I attempted to but uh, the, the, it didn't turn out like well, so anyways, I'm using a new software to edit and I switch from Premiere because that's expensive to DaVinci Resolve and I'm learning how to use it and I'm hoping I finish it sometime for, for the time when I want, actually want to post it. So anyways, supplies. First of all, this is my little tin of handmade watercolors. All of these watercolors were made by me except for this two shimmery shades right here. They are by different friends on Instagram. Um, one of them no longer makes paints anymore, but I, I treasure her paints a lot. <laughs> I have a whole, I have a, like a whole 24 palette of them. So I, I treasure them and I should use them more because yeah. Anyways, um, these are all handmade paints that I made when I still had the supplies to make paints. Um, I haven't been able to rebuy them. So yeah, and this is just like a souvenir tin that I got at Tokyo Trick when I was in Japan. And I've been using it as a palette. It's really nice. And it lays flat. It lays flat. Yeah. Anyways, my, my ISG. That's That was my main supply during this challenge. Next, I have my Posca markers. This this was more like a complimentary supply that I use. I mainly use like the white one to like, you know, add like little shinies in the eyes. <laughs> and yeah, I use them here and there. I Most of them are like the bigger Posca size. Let me open them up. Most of my collection is like the bigger 3M, I think. I don't want to yap too much <laughs> about supplies, but Posca markers, yeah, they were so a, a supplementary supply during this challenge. Next, let's talk paper. So I bought two blocks of Arches watercolor paper. This is the hot press one, and I bought two blocks and cut them in half. So they weren't, this is like a nine by 12, and I cut them in half so they wouldn't be like so big. <laughs> Because obviously, if the paper is bigger, the paintings are gonna take longer. Because you, 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 you want to add like more details to them. So, yeah, a paper brushes. I mainly, mainly, mainly use. These are my two Scotta Perla. Um, I think they are synthetic brushes, and I do prefer synthetic brushes for my watercolors because I have a heavy hand. Something else that I used when I had like big washes to paint was this this Van Gogh, I think it's a squirrel, but this is just, you know, a quill a style brush and it's pretty big and it was really expensive and I actually don't like it too much because it sheds quite a bit, which I wasn't expecting. Um, I don't know if maybe that's the case with Van Gogh and other quill brushes don't shed as much. But yeah, I'm kind of like eh about this one, but it's been useful because it's like the biggest brush I have. <laughs> this set of Creative Mark Mimic brushes, these are also synthetic. And I have like a set of multiple, multi I, I, I have a set of multiple of these, but I only use this one because it's my, it's just like my smaller, <laughs> my smallest brush. So I, that's, that's the one I used. I kicked the camera. Fantastic. Anyways, for lining, I so for for big paintings, I usually like to use these here are my inks. They are acrylic inks, and I usually use like a dip pen and those 
to line my drawings and I have like a bunch of colors so it's it's pretty fun that I, ha I get to like have colorful line art and I actually have some also some colored micron pens but for this challenge I want to keep it I just wanted to keep it simple so I have these two Stadler pigment markers and I have a 0 0.3 and a 0 0.1 and that's the only thing that I use for line art during the challenge they were amazing I, I actually prefer these over microns is that a hot take? I, I think these are better And last but not least, I have my color pencils. And I'm trying to like unzip, unzip. I have like a huge case of watercolor pencils. So these are my watercolor pencils. The Prismacolor ones are like really fucking old. I also have some Faber Castell Polychromos here. And in here. <laughs> I had my husband bring me I was still in Costa Rica and I had my husband bring me this from a trip and he was like I didn't know you were gonna order a fucking backpack for your color pencil I thought it was gonna be like a small pencil case and I was like no I told you it was like 150 color pencil pencil case <laughs> I do want some new color pencils because my yeah my prism colors are really old like they are very frail now so that's the splice that i use so i'm gonna rearrange my tripod here and i have top down things so i can show you all the paintings that i made the first one there is already spoiling it for you i'm gonna confess i tried recording this yesterday but i didn't turn out well i had my drawings like all slightly like this and that really bothers me. I want them to be in frame when I'm showing them to you. So this stack here gives me a serotonin boost that you have like no idea. I start. This was from number one and this was from Daisy. I'm gonna grab my iPad. I'm gonna cross reference so I can tell you the correct prompt. <laughs> so this was Daisy. This was prompt for day number one. And I hadn't drawn or painted anything in like a month or more definitely haven't drawn anything in like a month by the time i sat down to draw this so i was i felt really rusty and i feel like you know there's gonna be a team on these on this challenge of like anatomy not being like perfect but i usually when i when i put the time you know i do sketches over a couple of days and not like in one sitting and print them out and paint them so I feel like there's a lot of anatomy mistakes that I usually catch but obviously during a daily drawing challenge that lasts a month that's kind of hard <laughs> so yeah prompt number one Daisy I'm even though her arm looks kind of big and weird I actually really like this I think she looks pretty cute and yeah, I was really happy when I finished. I was like, oh, I guess I haven't forgotten how to draw. <laughs> so day number two was Sparkle. This is the day that I realized that it was gonna get that it was gonna be harder than I remember to get flat washes. So I did a flat. I, I tried to do a flat wash on the background, and then I had to go in with tons and tons of color pencil to even it out because I didn't want texture in the background. I wanted it pretty dark. And for this one, I did the thing, that technique of painting the shadows first. So I painted the shadows in like these bluish, grayish tint, and then I painted the colors on top. For the purple specifically, I, I had to add like more paint on, on the shadow parts because it was too light. I also did like, I went over the drawing with like over the shaded areas with color pencil to help it blend in with the background. I think in the camera it like enhances the contrast and I think it shows it makes the character the shadow the shadowy parts of the character kind of like blending with the background which is what I wanted. I wanted the face and her expression to be the focus of the painting. So that's that's that was my attempt. I think I was sort of successful. 
This is prompt four, number three, day number three, paw. I guess I could like paint it any animal or any sort of paw print or something, but I kind of went, I came with the idea of a cat ruining someone's painting. So that was that. I didn't love this sketch. I feel like her face is a little bit weird. Definitely messed up in the floor, the pattern of floor because I didn't plan, I, I did not plan the pattern out. I kind of like freehanded <laughs> the pattern with the watercolors instead of doing like color pencils on, or something erasable. So yeah, I, I think I messed up a little bit there. The pattern is not very correct or straight or anything at all. So it is what it is. It, it's fine. It's a daily drawing challenge. Number four was the sky. And I honestly don't have much to say about this one. The sky I can tell you is pale blue. So getting it flat was really hard and I had to add some color pencils on top. Hot press paper will not yield the flattest washes. So you have to help it out a little bit, which is something I start doing later in the challenge. But yeah, they, they're cute. Just two girls pointing at a, a cloud that looks like a fish or a dolphin. I was going for dolphin, but I think it, it's definitely fish shaped. <laughs> but number five is fawn. And it's just, you know, an anime girl, an anime fawn girl running around in a grass field with little butterflies flying around with her i this is <laughs> this is definitely a very cliche drawing but i i kind of love it <laughs> it was it was kind of fun to work with to work on and her outfit is kind of cute and i think she's cute yeah obviously there's not much concept and thought going behind these paintings as you are seeing number six is a sketch and I decided to paint a girl sitting in like a ledge a I don't know bench concrete bench is that concrete is, is that what you call it a concrete bench my university had these all over campus and especially in our in, in the art building we had these and we would sit there to either eat chat or draw <laughs> so this is kind of like one of those uni uni inspired paintings kind of relishing in the old days <laughs> I, I miss being in university it was so easy and so much fun number seven is bud and I decided to paint you know just some buds two two flower buds I could have gone with like the friend thing but I feel like I had drawn like two girls pointing at the sky so I really wanted to paint some flowers. I actually really enjoy painting flowers and you, I think you can find some flower paintings within my older blogs on my channel, if that's something you're interested in. I did enlist the help of gouache for this painting and this is Winsor & Newton's designer wash. I honestly thought I would use it more during the challenge, but I use it once. <laughs> So yeah, just for this background, I mixed a dark shade of green and the camera is looking pretty black, but it's like a, it's, it's, it's green. I swear to you, it's a dark green. <laughs> Number eight is River and I don't like this one at all. I struggled with finding an idea for this one. Like, okay, I guess the prompt is River, but I, I struggled to find something to paint within that prompt. This one was hard. Shan also complained that it was really hard for her to come up with it on her on her YouTube video she made pre pitched over. She was like, why did I choose these? <laughs> it's so hard. But yeah, I, I don't love it. I think it's okay. Number nine is apricot and I really like this one. It's so bright and so fun. I really like this painting. I think it turned out great. And yeah, I, I I paint so many girls that sometimes I just have fun painting like something else. In retrospect, I could have added like a little fairy, like, you know, somewhere playing, dancing, resting, doing something. But I didn't want to give it so much thought, so I just painted some apricots. I think I, I really like the 
colors in this painting. I, I want I want to frame it and put it in my kitchen. Number 10, it's Pixel, and we have our queen, Miku. I've been fighting to not get into like the, to just not go into the Miku rabbit hole again. Rabbit hole, rabbit hole. I'm saying stuff weirdly, but yeah, she she's cute and she's there and I drew her for Pixel because I thought it was clever. <laughs> and I made little pixels with Posca pens flying around because she's our virtual queen. 11 is Will and I really hate this one. I thought the idea was cute. I thought this sketch was looking eh, but then I penned it and I was like, why? Why is this so weird? Why do I feel like she's like staring into my soul? There's just something uncanny about this one and I hate it. Let's move on. Number 12 is Earth. I'm pretty, pretty happy with this one. It's fine. This one has shimmer in it. One of like the total of two paintings that I added shimmery watercolor to. She's just in an earth witch and she is gigantic. I don't know, a, a weird illustration I think, but eh, she's cute. Next it is 13 Cape. I really like this one. I just like, for some reason I always like painting like short short eyebrows and white hair. I don't know, I, the color scheme is very simple. And at this one, just the idea came, came into me like so fast and the, I really like the colors. It's just very simple. I think it's effective. Yeah, I'm very, very happy. Very happy with how she turned out. I never, I don't know why I love, purple is my f favorite color and I just, I rarely use it in my paintings. So very happy I painted this one. Number 14 is Borrow, and this one is a very, very cute one. I really wanted this one to have like very soft colors. There's no color pencil or anything else in this drawing except for like the watercolor, the Stadler pigment liners, and the Posca pens. So this one was very simple, very fun to paint, and she is very cute. I'm not fantastic with animal anatomy. <laughs> So the bunny is not like very correct, but it, it it's shaped like a bunny, so I'm gonna give myself a pass. <laughs> 15 is Lamp, and this is one of my favorite paintings from the whole challenge, again, because it's purple. And I feel like the shading and the lightning turn out so nice. I feel like I achieved, I feel like I learned and achieved something with this painting that I hadn't done before. So I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. The two pigments for the background are Dioxys in Violet and Nickel Azo Yellow. Which, if you have, if you know about these pigments and how they behave, they are very prone to like quintessential watercolor texture. You know, cauliflowering and like hard edges and stuff. So I wetted the whole background before I, I, I wet the whole background first to paint this, and then I added like you know. Like the colors, the pigments on top, so they blended in seamlessly, and I was very pleased with that. I think, I think I achieved something, you know, with this one. I'm very, very happy, very pleased. Number sixteen is Owl, and I found like I this is like a mashup of multiple Pinterest <laughs> references. So I had like a reference for her clothes, a reference for her and her hair and the hairstyle she has there was a reference for like the pose of a girl with an owl i made the i made the owl like way bigger than it was in the <laughs> original picture but it, it's whatever it's fine he can be as big as he wants he's majestic yeah i'm obviously again i'm not an animal painter so i i think the owl is not super correct but it i think it he turned out nice enough <laughs> and yeah this one also has some shimmer watercolor in it it's like a bronze pigment and it was really fun to paint this one i really liked her and i feel like her white bluish dress really complements her skin color so i'm really happy with it 17 is slow so i'm gonna show 
both of these together to you, 17 and 18, because they are the partner prompts for these challenge. I wish I had done better for them. <laughs> Let me show them to you like this. We have 17 is low and 18 fast. And I decided to go for weapon types for these prompts. So the big sword, the claymore, Claymore is the word for Genshin, but like the great sword. <laughs> I'm a Genshin player if you don't know. The the Claymore is like a slow weapon type because it's like big and hard to move around. And then I I personally think the arrows are faster to shoot. So and they go fast. I don't know. That was my thinking behind choosing <laughs> a great sword and a bow. <laughs> And I gave them some armor and she didn't, she would be like the front lines. She's wearing like full on armor. I didn't want to give her like a skimpy outfit that it's usual for like fancy girl characters when they're in like wearing armor that barely covers the breasts. So I feel like this is like my first time painting armor. So it was a bit of a, a challenge. <laughs> it was not a challenge to paint the armor in a day. Her outfit, it's a lot more simple. I don't love these, but I'm happy with like the idea. I feel like I could have, I could make these again and produce something a little bit better. I also feel like the anatomy on these two is not great, so. 19 is crocodile. And for this one, this was a cop, a cop out because I didn't want to paint cro crocodile because they look hard to draw and paint and the yeah it, it looks like a hard painting to make with this like scaly texture so i painted a little girl dressed up as a crocodile doing trick or treating because it's october and it's it was <laughs> it was october i am recording november 1st so it's no longer october but everybody is celebrating halloween so i don't personally celebrate halloween i just i didn't grow up with it in costa rica it's not it was not a thing it's more a thing now than it was when i was a kid so i don't have like the nostalgia thing for trick-or-treating or anything yeah i don't know i i got like influenced <laughs> into painting a girl trick-or-treating and yeah she's 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 cute i had to like problems i had to problem solve a lot with this painting because i since I was trying to like paint everything in like two layers, so base color layer and then the cell shading and that's it to make it easy for myself because I had to crank one of these a day, right? So I went it too dark with the green in the shadows and I was like crap, that's, that's way too much contrast. So I had to like problem solve, add some like bits of yellow throughout the painting like here and like the top here and like you know the eyes and stuff add some yellow and make it look like she's standing either in like in a front door where there's a light on or she's being illuminated by the st a street lamp or something and make the background dark so that the really dark <laughs> green that i used in the shading would make sense so yeah this one this one was an interesting one to work on i'm pretty happy with how it turned out Number 20 is rest and this is one of those that I thought would be so easy, so fast to do, I'm just gonna do, you know, I'm just gonna do monochromatic with indantron blue and that's it. And it was way harder than I expected and I invested a lot more. It's looking so bright blue in the camera compared to how it looks in real life. Indantron blue does not look like this. If it looks really bright blue, like almost ultramarine, that's not how indantron blue dries it's pretty muted but anyways i did mix in a tiny bit of black for the darker areas here and here but it's mostly just like you know a monochromatic pen painting i hope black is, is black allowed in monochromatic paintings i hope so <laughs> but yeah just just a girl and her cat who is soon to wake her up so she won't be resting for much longer but yeah, this is one of those that was deceivingly time consuming. <laughs> Number 21 is greenhouse. This was a tough one because, you know, when you're thinking of a greenhouse, greenhouses have like a, a lot of clutter inside. So I had to like simplify it and 
make the girl covering the table so you don't see the plants behind her so I can like avoid some extra detail and like this tray it, it doesn't have any plants it's just just dirt <laughs> yeah I think overall the color scheme I really like I, li I really like the color of her shirt it's an emerald green and not a turquoise blue that you can see on camera yeah this 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 one was fun I think I could have done better with the especially with the glass walls like there's no three-dimensionality to these panels so I could have done better in that aspect but daily challenge so <laughs> it's fine I, I think it's a it's a cute it's a cute drawing for making it a day 22 is village and I don't like this one it feels kind of like unfinished I don't have that much experience painting landscapes or urban sketching so I got like scared of detail. I tried to like add shading and stuff, but the the detailing escaped me. I, I wasn't sure like how much should I add. This feels like it needs more detailing, but I wasn't sure where to put it. So it's kind of like there. I, I don't know what to say. It, it feels unfinished, like it's just a sketch in a sketchbook. Number 23 is party, just a little girl playing party with her plushies. I think I think this painting kind of like came together from the fact that my my sister just had a baby and she bought like a shit ton of pink balloons. So many that everybody was like, is she crazy? Like you don't we don't need that many balloons to decorate for the baby shower. And she was like, oh well she can use them on her next few birthdays. So I feel like that was kind of still in my mind and that's how this painting came to be. And it sort of has like a primary <laughs> color palette going on with pink, blue, and yellow. It's it's cute. I think it's a cute painting. Am I super happy with everything? No, but it's it's fine. It's okay. 24 is radish. And this one has like a tiny tiny little fairy that almost it's almost invisible <laughs> in the painting if you look at it too fast. But yeah, she she's She's very small and it's just a radish. I don't know what else to say. This was a very very simple painting That's that's all I have to say. I really like the colors of the radish. That's all that, that's all I have for this one Number 25 is a stone and just a girl carving a stone. I definitely I actually painted these like I painted these two like side to side during a weekend so that I could have like some some slack <laughs> for the rest of the of the challenge if I was feeling too tired or something. So I painted I painted both of them like at the same time. Yeah, this one this one was definitely a cop out because I didn't shape the marble slab glass stone cube thing, whatever it is called. I I didn't shape it like anything. So she's just starting, and I gave her like jean clothes, so it'll be easy to paint. But I have I gave her a cute bandana with flowers. So that was that, that's like a lot of detail for this painting. <laughs> I I definitely copped out with this one. Number twenty six was backpack. Well, I was browsing on Pinterest inspiration for the backpack prompt. I came across this little cat with a backpack, and I painted him really fat. I don't know what it is. Cat, like, I'm not an expert in cat anatomy, obviously. So he somehow turned really fat looking in this painting. And I think it's just like there, there was like an Ill illusion in the painting because the, the straps were digging into his fur and I just made him fatter and fatter to kind of like show, <laughs> to kind of show that the the strap was digging into his fur and now he looks really chunky. <laughs> but I think it's a cute painting. He's he's cute, right? I tell me he's cute. I really tried. Cats I'm trying to learn to paint cute cats, but they aren't I need to study their anatomy more. Yeah. That's that's what I have for a backpack. Just a cute cat. Hopefully cute cat. Number twenty-seven almost done is grass and this one turned out so bright <laughs> I didn't want the grass to be so bright but I kind of messed up at some point at night I want to make a note that I painted all of these paintings from around 
9ish, 10 to 12. So at the end of the day, so I was tired, okay? And I made the grass too bright and I just had to run with it. I feel like the contrast is a little bit too high within the grass and her, but I don't have, I, I can't do much about it. I try like adding like darker shades of grass here and there to make her pop a little bit. Yeah, uh, she's walking around your backyard. <laughs> 28 is Pony. Did you expect to see a horse here? I hope you didn't. I have tried drawing horses before, actually for a university project and they are really hard. So if you were expecting me to draw a horse, that was not gonna happen. So we have a girl with a ponytail. And I use a Pinterest reference for this. Number 29 is Break. This one was fun to paint. I wasn't like, this is one of those that I I can doodle, I pre-made doodles for all of my paintings beforehand and finished like seven before November started, right? There were some prompts that didn't have any doodles and break. Uh, slow fast, the weapon armor girls, those did not have doodles until I actually sat down to make them and had to come up with an idea. And break, break was the other one that did not have a doodle or an idea you know, sketched out to help me. I just kind of like, again, I literally Google break and see what came up and I, it showed me like a girl break dancing. And I was like, that looks, that sounds like fun. I wanna, I'd wanna draw a girl break dancing. That sounds like a lot of fun. Just one of those things that I never thought I would paint. Like break dancing, I'm not into like hip hop music or anything. So it was an interesting to go down like the rabbit hole of like break dance poses. <laughs> trying to find one that was like dynamic and fun looking because I actually really enjoyed painting very dynamic poses. So yeah, uh, breakdancing girl. This this was really fun to draw and paint. The anatomy is not great, that's why I covered most of it with dark paint, but if, if you look at it too closely, it will start to like not make sense. Number 30 is Pearl. This one did have a doodle, a little idea that I I sketched out beforehand and it was just this painting of a necklace on a on a girl's chest. I really enjoy painting this one. I had like a few weeks ago I watched this guy open up clams on YouTube for some reason. It just show up in like my shorts. <laughs> and he pulled out these different color different colored pearls and there were like some pink ones, some purple ones and some like blue ones and I was like are those the thing I didn't know? Like I didn't know like these pink, bluish, lilac-y toned pearls existed. So I was like, I, like naturally, they naturally have that color. And I was like, I want, I want a necklace made of those. Those look so gorgeous. So I am manifesting my pearl necklace because I want to be a classy lady. <laughs> yeah, manifesting my pearl necklace that I don't have. And the last prompt, for the whole month is a spider and I gave her a, a spider web top and a spider buns. She's very Halloween coated. <laughs> One of the things that had happened since last I recorded a video and gave an update on anything is that I learned how to crochet and I've been having a lot of fun doing crochet things so I wanted to at some point during the challenge draw a crochet top so that's why the spider top is there and the other thing is I saw this girl doing these these like holders I guess I don't know she called them pillow cozies for iced tea for like iced tea and coffee or hot coffee whatever you want to drink and they're just like they're like like a pillow they look like a pillow with a handle and it goes around it, it like it like goes around the your bottle and it, it goes around your bottle so you can hold it and you know get your hand cold and wet. I wanted to give her one of those and they're like really chunky and huge so her hand looks really small but I, I think overall I made that drink huge. <laughs> she has a large coffee. That's the last one that I have for you. Okay, that is all for my Pitchtober paintings. I hope you had fun watching me tour the challenge. I feel like I'm, I'm, my brain is being so ingrained with like the phrase sketchbook tour that saying 
and thinking about a pitched over, a pitched over tour kind of like messes me up in, in my brain. Whatever. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you have a nice weekend. If I am able to upload this in the weekend, I'm not. I hope you have a nice week ahead. And yeah, th thank you. Thank you for watching. I have a coffee. I am open for commissions if you're interested. You know, help a girl out. I'm gonna end the video now. Thank you. Bye.